Good morning, comic book community, and welcome to KJ's Porch Puppy Comics, where if you can't run with the big dogs, just stay on the porch. It's nice on the porch. This is the Pickle Burrow, episode 58, you all. Episode 58. So we yet thank the Lord this morning for you tuning in. Uh, sorry that this video wasn't put out usually between the 12 a.m. and 6 a.m. hour. As I stated, we have a lot going on. And, uh, well, we just have a lot going on. Life happens, as my sister says so often. Life happens. So we yet thank the Lord for you tuning in. As I say so many times, like, share, and subscribe. Ring that notification bell. I uh, thank the Lord. I'm still holding. I was at 11 subscribers. I think some, it came back, a few new ones. And then I checked it again here, I think yesterday after the last one and uh, come to find out, I guess the one uh, that I picked up or one of the other ones had dropped off. Um, I'm still trying to figure out the nuances of all this. You know, I know a lot of people, you know, they have a lot of from the content that I've seen thus far. And, uh, you know, I said, I still like the hobby. I still like showing the books. I'm just one, like I said, I'm just an old dinosaur. I just like throwing the books up and showing the books. I don't have a whole lot of extensive knowledge like some folks, you know, but I mean, it's just fun. And, you know, just for that one or two or maybe <laughs> 10 collectors out there, uh, that just enjoy just seeing a haul, you know, and enjoying the haul for what it is, uh, showing off their books and different things. I've seen some others then come on the scene and uh, they putting out some, you know, real decent content, showing some nice books and different things. And uh, it's just fun. It's just fun. Like I said, I don't look to be, and we, I'm praying, looking, hoping ain't nobody else is in competition, you know, uh, but it, it is what it is. But from here, from the KJ Porch Puppy comics videos, you know, I'm here, like I said, uh, I'm here to show off books, uh, more so to even to encourage, to help, to let you know that Jesus Christ is the hope. And he is the only way in this world. Because I'm telling you, this world is something else, y'all. And I don't know. Don't fool yourself and think it's getting better. Uh, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. They always say when preachers come in and get to talking, they always think we preachers of gloom and doom. No, we're trying to let you know that Jesus Christ, he's real. Jesus Christ is the one that will help you, that will sure you up, that... Though I said that he'll wipe those tears from your eyes. He'll, he'll give you, he'll give you stability. He'll give you peace in mind. He said, I give peace. That surpasses all understanding. You know, I don't understand why I had this peace in this wicked world, but yet and still the Lord is giving peace, evil and death and just every abominable thing you can think of is yet taking place in this world. And I'll tell you, like I told you before in previous videos, don't get desensitized to it. Our pastor tells us so many times, and we let the other people know. We let the world know it. We had the opportunity. Don't get distracted by the distractions. You know, they think that putting a man in office or a woman in office or different things like that is going gonna, is gonna to help things. It's going to make things better. But until this nation, which I love, I love America. Turn back to God, comic book community. Oh, my Lord. Yet praying, you all. So let's get on with the books on this episode 58 of The Pickle Barrel. Let's take the lid off in it and see what's in it. The book that you see before you is another one of those books that came in along with those uh, Frank Miller Batmans. Uh, these little trades, I call them. They might have another name for them. But uh, it's Batman Riddler. Square Bound. It's not a bad book. You know, um, let me see. Let's move on. I, I did something different this trip, y'all. Oh, man, down. Hold on. Here we go. Batman Two-Face. 
I said, Scott McDaniels. I might have to open that one up, y'all. I didn't, when I see these, sometimes I don't, it's a lot of Batman I like to look at and a bunch of them I just don't really mess with, but I'm gonna have to go back through and check these out. Next book, Thing and the Human Torch, that new thing team up, new Marvel two and one. Uh, first issue of this one. I did see this one when it first come out. I never did get get into it because, like I said, you know, when books started getting too high, I had to back off. Uh, I used to tell folks when, uh, oh, when books go up to 75 cents, I'm going to quit collecting. Well, books hit 75 cents. I was still collecting. When books go up to $1.50, I'm going to quit collection. collecting. Books went up to $1.50. I was still picking up books. I picked them up on up to $3.99, maybe some $4.99. And then I got to thinking, you know, if you take them $4.99s and $5.99s and hold on to them and put them together, you can buy you one big, nice old book. You know, uh, I know, you know, I said, I see a lot of content creators and they've got a lot of new books and a lot of variant covers and, and different things. And, uh, but you know, it's, it's, it, it, you know, if that's, I, I'm, I'm, I'm using T. Ravis's tagline again, collect what you like, but I got to collect what I can afford and like at the same time. So that's what we have here on the thing two and one. Let me straighten them up a little bit. We have typhoid fever. X-Men, number one, dealing with Typhoid Mary. I think it was a four-issue one-shots is what they were. And if you put the covers together, they make one whole cover, one whole, you know, big uh, collage of the books put together. Um, these were the only two that was in the blessed box. Typhoid Fever Iron Fist. That was the accumulation of the whole matter uh, with this one here. It wasn't bad. I thumb through them. Yeah, it is all right. I mean, you know, I like Typhoid Mary as a character when she appeared in Daredevil. Uh, you know, now she's, uh, I guess they doing the mutant thing with her now. So I don't know. I never did collect this series when it come out. So it is what it is, comic book community. It is what it is. Next book on the docket. This one here was so odd that I had to read it. Batman and Brother Power the Geek, back in the 70s, late 60s, early 70s, uh, I used to see that there was a Brother Power the Geek and never did, a uh, the geek, yeah, never did uh, really get into it, never did really know what the character was. Um, you know, still, I believe he was some type of zombie character, I would imagine. But those of you out there in the comic book community that's familiar with this character, you all let me know. But uh, Michael J. Uh, Straczynski and Jesus Ceres, Ceres, I believe that's the way they pronounce his name. I'm sorry if I butchered your name, my brother. Uh, but it was something. You know, and I like the story tagline on this Brave and the Bold. It says, Lost Stories of Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow. And this story here was fairly decent, told from the perspective of Batman and told from the perspective of the geek. Uh, I like this one line in there where Batman says he refused to call him Brother Power. So he just called him the geek, you know. Uh, but uh, it was an interesting read, you all. And I believe down the road, if I find one in a little bit better condition, I may add this book to the PC just because it was an interesting read. If you see it out there in your dollar boxes or what have you, your 50 cent boxes, your sale boxes, if you're into Brave and the Bold, because I used to like the old Brave and the Bold back in the day, do yourself a favor and pick the book up. I guarantee you, you will enjoy the read, you know, and uh, it was just a good read overall. Let's move these out of the way. Now, yesterday, when I done the video, I had teased you all with, I told you we're going to go into the zone of Green Lantern. And this, it will probably be the last stack 
out of the blessed box. Again, like I said, I hadn't been anywhere. Me and Brother Mikey have been trying to coordinate a run, and it's, it's just right now, like I said, at this particular time of year, it's just really impossible. Uh, maybe planning on trying to do a little trading with my brother T. Ravis, do a little trading with him and uh, see what's up. And uh, so hopefully maybe I'll have some more stuff to show down the road. But after I finish with this stack, comic book community, then that'll be it for the blessed box. Now, I want to tell you why I'm calling this the blessed box is for several reasons. One is because, like I said, it's been about three months. They're a little over that I hadn't been able to pick up nothing. Maybe an odd book here and there from eBay. Uh, again, like I said, finances. If you all ain't never been to the grocery store or gassed your vehicle up, you understand how cash is. And when you on a fixed income, which before you get started, understand, I know everybody, even the folks that's working are on a fixed income. Uh, used to be that same person before I got rendered by a semi, but it is what it is. So when you are on a fixed income, then you have to do what you have to do. And uh, first things first, you know, you take care of family and home first, uh, what other, other obligations you have, and you may, you just may on occasion have a little money set back. Uh, I don't like running up my credit cards, you know, go buying up books and stuff. I'm a cash man. If I got a little cash on me, I'd rather go ahead and do it. Uh, Brother Skimmy said cash is king, you know, so um, I'm just weird, you all. So y'all finding out another little bit more insight about the uh, porch puppy over here. But KJ ain't going to steer you wrong. He's going to tell you right. So we're going to start off with Sinestro. Now, in the New 52, I'm telling you all, this New 52 stuff, y'all need to go back. If you haven't experienced it, go back. Beautiful art, beautiful stories. I keep seeing this bun down here. So I'm thinking that, uh, you know, he's he's got a pretty good following, if I'm not mistaken, as a writer. And... Uh, you know, so I said, well, you know, back in New 52, you know, brother was writing and I'm telling you and you all forgive me in the comic book community because I'm more artist generated, more artist oriented than I am, you know, for the writer. And I'm not taking nothing away from them, you know, but I've always been the type of person to believe that if, a, if an artist can tell a story through the art, you know, that's a great artist. If you can tell an artist, you know, tell a story through the art. And um, so, you know, just like that G.I. Joe 21, that solid issue supposedly told from the vantage point of Snake Eyes. Uh, great book. I'd like to own one of those myself. Anytime you find them, if, you know, you, you're going to find that 21. And you'll, you'll find it sometimes it's ragged out or sometimes you just can't afford to buy the book. But I, when I had it, I went through it and I was thoroughly pleased with the way the story it had a good flow and everything. So yet and still, I jumped ahead. Sinestro, number eight, New 52. Great book, great art, great story. Sinestro, number nine, same thing. And look at the condition of these books. And as I was telling you, the reason I call this the blessed box is because going back to before I went on this little rant, that, you know, when you have the when you got people that you that you talk to that you can deal with, they'll work out different things. Like I said, I thank the Lord for uh, the the people that the Lord put in my path, even in dealing with the hobby. You know, down through the years, you know, brother Rob, uh, brother Matt, uh, brother Paul, uh, brother Jim at Comic Quest. You know, uh, I got hooked up with brother Jim at Comic Quest through our brother, Kevin Clark, that used to run Fantasy Limited here in town. And so uh, he was a good friend. They still good friends. And they was always willing to work out a deal. And that's what I like. You know, I mean, I, I would love to go into a shop and say, hey, you know, you, you got a bunch of dollar books over here. You think you'd sell them for a quarter a piece, you know, uh, if you're not moving them or something, you know. But I mean, I understand folks got to make money. And uh, and I understand because as our as our bishop says so many times, it takes money to buy land. And my 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 catchphrase to that is, yes, indeed. And it also takes money uh, to keep the land that you bought. 
But anyway, the blessed box came when I had, uh, Lord had blessed, I had a little extra money. And uh, Brother Paul sold me a long box. I don't mind telling you, a lot of times people want to hear a little bit more content than just showing the books. Brother Paul sold me a long box because I needed bags and boards and a small box as well. But this brother sold me a long box for 80 bucks. And when you can buy, I know sometimes I've heard guys buy, they buy long boxes for 50 bucks and different things. 80 bucks was a, a great price for me. And I'm gonna tell you why. It's because you can go through and out of all of Brother Paul's dollar boxes, I, I went through and could pick out whatever I wanted to, you know, add to my box. So to me, it was a blessing. There's a reason I call it a blessed box. And like I said, I'm not taking nothing away from nobody else. You know, it's just, you know, how the, the thing flies at that particular time, you know, but it is what it is. Sinestro number 10, you all. Now we're moving into some Green Lantern, Green Lantern Corps, some Guy Gardner's. Uh, this is another set, you all, that I'm planning on trying to put together at some point because I had this set at one time. And I guess probably for me had to be probably next to one of the greatest Green Lantern stories I have ever read. This Blackest Night, the covers was good. You know, it was, uh, you know, Jeff Johns writing. You know, I mean, it was it was great stuff. It was great stuff dealing with the black hand. And if you go back to your black hand or your Green Lantern mythos and look at some of your older books, you'll understand that, you know, he was all right as far as characters go, but he wasn't a, he wasn't a major player as far as villains go. But when you find out that this guy here, you know, when things started going cuckoo for Cocoa Puff, well, this guy here become a major player real quick. And uh, he gave the core a run for their money. And that's Blackest Night number two of eight. Green Lantern Corpse is a new 52. This is basically a cover grab for me. I mean, <laughs> come on, y'all. Look at that cover. That is sharp. You know, you got uh, John Stewart. And you got... Um, Oh, Guy Gardner, and I don't know who the big guy is behind them, but they mean business. And the thing about it, what I like about it is these uh, laser cannons that they're holding aren't constructs. These are the real deal. You know, so uh, I like that it says lock and load. So, I mean, you know, New 52 was, was, was doing, some, doing some great stuff. Okay, now we have... Prelude to the Blackest Night, Green Lantern Corpse, with the Sinestro on the cover. Number 35, great book. Number 36, another prelude, Green Lantern Corpse. Number 37, another prelude. Beautiful books, beautiful books indeed, you all. It's great. I mean, you can look at that type of stuff here in the in the pickle barrel. I'm trying to let you know you got something right there. And you know y'all not going to get away from me today without no scripture. But look here, I'm going to read this scripture over that I read in the video yesterday because I believe it still bears reading. For what shall it profit the man if he gain, if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? The question is being asked by Jesus. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me, because it seems like people are ashamed of Jesus Christ, and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, even that he was talking to the disciples back in that day, these words still reign true now in this day and time. He says, of him also shall the son of man be ashamed when he cometh, in the glory of his father with the holy angels. Again, may the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his holy word. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? People are already jumping in and running for the game. 
running for what y'all can get, what you can do for me. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. And this is the way things is. They said, well, it's dog eat dog. Jesus never did set it up like that. It never was supposed to be that way, comic book community. But we just thank the Lord. Think about it, though. Go back and read the whole chapter. That's Mark chapter 8. Go back and read it. Sit down sometime and just read it. We got, we got access to these mini computers that we carry on our sides and in our pockets, our back pockets and different things. So we got access to all that information and we can put the Bible app on our phone. Make sure that when you do, if you do, use the King James Version. Sometimes you can get so many different translations and one word can change the whole strength of the scripture. Black as Night, Green Lantern Corpse, number 39. Look at that zombie cover, y'all. I mean, this book here, it had a creepiness factor to it, but a, a, a definitely serious, you know, this, 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 was, this was getting bad. It was getting real bad. Corpse, number 41. Number 42. Still with the blackest night. This is a sharp cover. Number 43, Red Lantern, Green, a guy Gardner. Some guy on, uh, I can't think of which channel it was. Uh, Might have been Easy Comic Collectors, a comic book collector. And I think he showed a, uh, showed a Supergirl, Red Lantern, and the cover. And it was, it was a nice looking book. You know, eventually, if I can pick this whole run up here and there, uh, I like to put the whole run together. I think only thing when I did, I collected the uh, Green Lantern and then the Blackest Night eight issue run, but never the really offshoots, you know, like the Corps, the uh, the uh, all of the other ones that went along with it, because there was a bunch of them, and it ran for a little while. Jumping into Green Lantern issue forty four, him and Flash taking on the Black Hand. Issue 45, Sinestro and, and Star Sapphire. Jumping back in to the Green Lantern Corps, number 46. It says Black Ice. Green Lantern, number 47. I told you this is going to be Green Lantern heavy, you all. Green Lantern, number 48. Green Lantern, number 49. That's a wicked cover right there. Mm -hmm. Then it takes a turn from the Blackest Night. And I had 50, I thought, but I'm going to have to go back through and check in the pickle barrel and see if I've got a 50. If not, I'll let, like I said, I'm going to have to write everything down. And I'm still, like I said, old school. I know everybody got all these different apps and different things they put on their phones, but I'm still old school because it's easy for me to pull out my tablet that I have, my, my, my pocket tablet, <laughs> and ink pen. And write down what I need or, 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 you know, I can cross through what I done picked up. Yeah, I told you I'm dinosaur, you all. I'm old school, but I enjoy it. It's fun. All right. Let me move these out of the way. We got just a little bit of stack left to do. Jumps over to the brightest day. That was another good storyline. Green Lantern Corpse number 54. It looked like something off a game system right there. Sinestro versus Rainer. Something like a Mortal Kombat, isn't it? Uh, Green Lantern Corps, number 56. That's a sharp Sinestro cover. I don't get, like I said, I'm not having to tell you to look at the condition of the books. You can see for yourself. They are real nice. This white cover here is real nice. You know, the sharp corners. You see it all. This one here, if y'all run across it, this is a brightest day, number 15. That was another storyline. And you see 
the superheroes right there. You see the Martian Manhunter with a Green Lantern ring. This story here was something else. It says, whatever happened to the Manhunter from Mars? If you ever pick up this book, you need to pick it up and read that one. It is haunting. It is a haunting story. Let us move on. Brightest day number 17, Firestorm, another character I like. Beautiful cover, beautiful book. Number 19, Aqua War, dealing with Black Manna and his son and Aquaman. Aquaman loses his hand again in 20. 21. Firestorm versus Danny Monitor, 22. The New Four Elements, 23. And last but not least, comic book community number 24 with the Swamp Thing. So that's it for today, you all, for the Pickle Burrow episode 58. I thank you for tuning in, enjoy you, and I'm yet praying for you. Remember that only Jesus Christ can fill that void in your life. And remember, KJ's Porch Puppy Comics, because it's nice on the porch. I love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you, comic book community.